Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for the 2018 film that is just being seen in the United States for the first time in 2019 uh, via Shudder. It is a Shudder original. It is called The Wrath. And a uh, big shout out and a big thank you to Shudder for allowing me early access to this film so that I could do this review before it, it even hit the Shudder streaming service. So it is available on Shudder September 5th, I do believe. And my review should be up on the 3rd third um so yeah hopefully everyone enjoys it. and once again thank you very much shutter so let's get into this uh like i said 2018 film now this is actually a remake of a film from 1986 called woman's whale sorry i'm looking at my notes as i usually do uh yeah a 1986 film called woman's whale now i have not seen the original film it would be very interesting if i already had but I kind of just wanted to go into it as is. You know, I could have gone and tried to, tried to see the, mo the other movie, the original movie. Um, but I was also kind of like, you know, a lot of these people who are going to end up seeing it are probably just seeing this for the first time and probably have not seen Woman's Whale. So I'm just going to go in blind, basically. Um, so that's what I did. I may check out Woman's Whale now because I did see when I was Googling for my research that... Um, there were some people who were like, oh, we feel like this is vastly inferior to Woman's Whale. So I don't have that comparison to make. I just watched uh, The Wrath. So I will just be talking about that. The film is by director Yong Soon Yu. And yeah, I don't, I was not, I'm not familiar with anything else that Yong Soon Yu has done. Uh, I do watch Asian film. I watch Japanese film, Chinese film, Korean film, and this is a South Korean film. And the original Woman's Whale was also a South Korean film. Um, so I do watch those types of films. I don't watch a ton, but it's kind of like a here and there type thing. Uh, the other thing to point out is I'm also not huge into J-horror. And this film is very J-horror-esque. So honestly, if you're into J-horror, I would definitely recommend you check this movie out. It is going to be really up your alley. If you're not into J-horror, they're like me. Uh, there actually is some stuff in here for you as well. And I'll kind of get into that as I keep going with this review. So this film, oh, and, and disclaimer for people who have not seen my review videos before, uh, I kind of go through my notes as I was watching the film, as things occur to me. So it's kind of chronological, even though it's no spoilers, but it's one of those situations where you can watch this review before seeing the movie and or after seeing the movie, and it'll be a good review and it'll be meaningful to you in both ways. So I would recommend actually doing it before and after. Not just for me, but you know. Uh, so waste no time getting into things with this. It really sets up the horror super immediately, which is a great way to kind of grab audience attention, get people very engaged and be like, okay, I'm interested. Go on. What are we doing here? Interesting. So it really hit hard with that. And I really, really like when films do that instead of kind of like making you wait from the get go and kind of being like, okay, we got to have some sort of like backstory and build up. And there's a way to do the backstory and lay the story out after grabbing someone's attention first. And that's what this film does. And I appreciate when those things are done. Uh, one of the other things that hit me immediately with this film is it looks really good. It is so crisp looking. It uh, The camera shots are awesome. The directing is really good. The cinematography is wonderful. This film is aesthetically extremely pleasing. It looks outstanding. Now, this is where I'm going to say, if you're not huge into J-horror, you may actually still want to check this movie out because of how good it looks. I was just, I, I don't want to say I was shocked, but I was just very, like, surprised that I was, that it looked as amazing as it did. I mean, I see, I've seen plenty of horror films that look really good, but I don't go into every horror film assuming that it's going to look good because a lot of them just look like, oh, they look fine or they look okay, but this one struck me as looking particularly awesome. So I really like the aesthetics of this film. So that speaks to, like I said, the, the camera operator, the cinematographer, the director. Really, really good. Um, I like the setting of this because it, it kind of plays into, I like horror films that have kind of lesser used settings. And this is kind of a, okay, so to people who wouldn't do the research, it kind of seems like a feudal Japan type thing, but it's actually kind of like a feudal, Korea type thing. I wrote down specifically what it's supposed to be from. It's supposed to be from the Joseon, Jose, Joseon, I'm sorry, I'll just spell it, J-O-S-E-O-N dynasty, 
which was actually the final dynasty in Korea before dynasties weren't a thing anymore. Apparently, it was very Confucian uh, driven, and uh, it was the it was the final since it was the final dynasty. It was kind of the one that impacted current Korean South Korean society the most, and so there are a lot of remnants from it societally, and and they even said like problems that have arisen from from that uh, that form of government, that dynasty. So, um, yeah, like many aspects of it echo in current Korean society and culture. Uh, okay, so the... Oh, oh and I'll, I'll go back a second. Sorry, a little scattered on that. I love when there are lesser-known settings for horror. Because a lot of horror is kind of like contemporary, modern, or they kind of mine the same types of things like, you know... There are films even now going coming out that are just like, let's mine the slasher thing. The new American Horror Story is going to be a slasher thing. So um, it's nice when it's a little more original. And I kind of felt like it's a little more original, which is kind of weird for me to say since it is a remake. <laughs> but uh, for what's been coming out, it's it seems more original to me. And I, I appreciate that. I like that type of setting. Uh, the jump scares are pretty good in this, to be honest. Uh, if, if you're a person who's not big on jump scares, you kind of start to roll your eyes when there are a bunch of jump scares. Um, you might not like that in this film. I thought the jump scares when they were in there were effective. I thought they looked really good and pretty creative, to be honest. Uh, but then, like I said, I don't watch a lot of J-horror, so I don't know. Maybe for people who have wa watched a lot of J-horror, they'd see it. They'd see these jump scares and be like, Oh, it looks kind of similar to this or that. But from my perspective, it seemed pretty fresh, interesting, and they looked really good. I don't think you can deny that part, though, that it looked really good. Everything looked great. Um, so, like I said, yeah, for J-Horror fans, I really think you should check this out for sure. Uh, but if you don't like it, you know, the jump scares might be a little much and, you know, I don't know. Uh, so it doesn't go very long throughout the film. They, you don't have long stints where there's no horror going on. I think there's a really awesome, balanced mix of, you know, developing some story, things are a little bit calm, and then horrific things. And then the evil's here. And I felt like the engagement with the evil throughout the story was consistent. It was well-paced. Uh, it felt good. Uh, I will say that the overall, the film actually felt like maybe it was a little bit too long for what the story is. But at the same time, like I was saying how awesome it looks, how like crisp and amazing the film aesthetically overall is, that really helped out with um, kind of making the length of it not that much of a problem, actually. It kind of like negated that issue, in my opinion, because it's just so pleasing to look at. You don't mind it that it's going on longer than it seems like the story would allow. So, you know, small, small issue there, but also kind of... It takes care of itself in a sense. Uh, the, one thing I wrote down in here while I was watching, I was like, man, the evil in this is super pissed. Like, they go, it, it's it's not just one of these things where it's like, oh, maybe this evilness is understood, misunderstood, or maybe or maybe we're we're not reading the situation right. It's just like, this evil is like, it's pissed. It's, it's out for killing, vengeance. It is all about it. But speaking to that, the actual backstory, which a lot with a lot of these J-horror type films, there's always a backstory for how the evil became evil. And I kind of think that the backstory for that is, meh. I mean, it's not bad. It's just kind of okay. It's not anything super original. It's kind of well-trodden material for those types of backstories. So it was, it was fine, but I was hoping for more than fine on that front. But it was fine. Um, so once again, this is where the, uh, the aesthetics really helped out and kind of negated some of that. Some of the dialogue is a little bit weird. So I don't know. I mean, obviously I don't know Korean, so I don't know if it was the actual dialogue that was a little bit off or it's just the subtitle translations. So at least the subtitle translations I was seeing, some of the dialogue seemed a little weird. It seemed a little like people wouldn't really interact that way, but it wasn't super prevalent. It was just like a kind of here and there thing, and, and a line of dialogue here and there would strike you like, oh, that's a little weird. I don't know if I... Eh. So, I, like I said, I don't know. Was it the actual script, or what? Is it the translation? I don't know. Um, the story itself, it's not heavy on this, but it has a little bit of like a Cinderella feel to it, which I just kept my, kept 
it kept popping into my head as the film was going on. And if you've seen this, you know what I'm talking about. If you do see it, you'll you will know what I'm talking about. This is a little bit of like a Cinderella to it. So, um, so there's an issue. <laughs> In this, in my opinion, with keeping it kind of realistic in a few aspects, it's, it's two things I'm going to talk about right now. One thing is the victims in this, people who get it from the evil. Uh, it kind of seems like a lot of the times they're just kind of waiting for it. You know, like you get into the situation where they should probably be fighting back or probably be running and they just stand there and take it. And it's just like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to die. It's kind of like the Star Trek red shirts thing that everyone talks about, where it's just like, oh, that person's a red shirt. They're just gonna die. Might as well just lay down and take it. Like, that's how the characters are in this. It's like they accept it. They're just like, oh, um, yeah, it's about time that I'm supposed to die. Although they didn't watch us in it because of the time period. But but you know what I'm saying. Like, they're just like, it's time for me to die. I'll just stand here and, and accept my fate. So that feels a little weird. That's off, and I don't think that should have been in the film. I think it should have been a little more realistic with people like running for their lives, trying to fight, stuff like that. You get that a little bit with some characters, but um, you can just tell the characters that, that they were just like, we need bodies to, to get killed, so there we go. Just stand there and die. So I didn't really like that. Uh, the other issue was there's a, there's a point where it kind of takes you out of the time period uh, and the feel of the film, where they switch to a, like, night vision camera because it is totally dark. And, like, I get it from the aspect of what's going on in the story, but the problem is using that more modern um, film effect takes you out of that time period that you're supposed to be feeling for the story. And so it just didn't work. It's very jarring when it happens because it, it makes you feel weird because you're just like oh, this doesn't feel like it goes at all. So they definitely should have gone without that. They easily could have gone without that because it doesn't super matter to the story. They could have found a way around it easily, very easily. It was just kind of a bad choice. But, you know, there are a lot of good choices in this film. So, you know, just one of those things. Um, oh, yeah, and then the last thing I had in here I already kind of touched on, which is it, it is a little bit too long. It's I think it's like an hour and a half... And I just don't think the story needed an hour and a half. But like I said, aesthetically, it looks super good. So it's just pleasing to look at, to be honest. So there you go. So that's my review on it. No spoilers, really. Uh, I would be interested to know what everyone thinks about it if you, when you see it. Well, when this review comes out, no one will have seen it, really, because this is before it's available on Shutter. But as soon as it is available on Shutter, go ahead, check it out, and then put the comment down here of what did you think? You know, did you do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Tell me why, and let's get a conversation going. So I'm gonna give it my star rating, and out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm gonna give it a three. I think it's worth seeing, um, mainly because of the aesthetic, the aesthetics. It, like I said, it looks really good. Um, I I can't think of movies I've watched recently except like Midsummer, uh, in and that's an in the theater film that looked as good or better than this film so uh it looks outstanding and i think at least for that you should see it but like i said if you're a j-horror fan i would definitely recommend seeing it or if you know you're just j-horror curious you should check it out in my opinion it does now make me want to see woman's whale to be able to make a comparison between the two films and see if what i found on Go through google is accurate where people are like oh it's not as good as the original but people you know like people always say that type of stuff that's common so anyway, three stars, pretty good. Um, thank you again, Shudder, very much. I look forward to hopefully having these opportunities again to go ahead and review some videos or review some movies before they come out and do video reviews. So last but not least, please help me out. Hit that subscribe, everyone. If you like anything that I've done, this review, any reviews, I've been trying to do as many horror reviews as I can, but you know, I also have like a job and home life and all sorts of stuff to do, but I'm doing what I can trust that. Uh, but give me that subscribe. It really helps encourage me to try and find more time to make these things happen. Um, but thank you everyone for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.